Hello, and welcome to the Eurowhat, episode number 51 for the week of May 12th, 2019. It's Eurovision week. I'm Ben Smith, and I'm joined today by Mike McComb. Hello, Mike. Hello. We are a pair of Americans trying to make sense of the Eurovision Song Contest, and this week we'll be making our predictions for the Eurovision semifinals. It's here. It's here, and I have watched all 41 second rehearsal videos at this point, and I have thoughts. There's a lot to discuss. There's Uh, there's a lot going on. (laughs) So much to digest. And yeah, the first bit of bad news is that in my RSS feed, I have the Eurovision YouTube channel listed in there, and they posted the links to their live streams. Mm Mm-hmm. Normally, with something that's going to be playing in the future, you can click on it and you'll get the little reminder saying like, hey, do you want to get a notification when this goes live? Clicked on that on, I guess this was Friday, and it said it's not available in your country. So I think that confirms that the geoblock is still happening, even though there's nowhere in the US to technically watch Eurovision. So on the plus side, we we planned for this and we have a guide on the on the website, eurowhat.com. Mm-hmm. A lot of people seem to be plugging the German feed from like all the various forums that uh, talk about Eurovision stuff. Uh, we strongly recommend the Swedish feed as well. That one's been very reliable over the years. And right now we've got a list of all the broadcasters that are participating in Eurovision this year. We'll be checking during the semifinals to see which of those live streams are available. The most up-to-date list will be available probably Thursday evening. Okay, and then the the other news out of Tel Aviv is they have confirmed the various interval acts. Uh, we had kind of reported on this a few weeks ago, but it looks like there's been a little bit of a shift. This Tuesday, during semifinal one, Netta will be performing a new arrangement of Toy, I Have My Money on Children's Choir. I don't know about you, Mike. Yeah, I'm thinking either a children's choir or they'll actually let her use her Oh looper. yeah, they could just let her use her, her sampler. Uh, in addition to that, we have Donna International. Kudiman, who is a YouTube mashup artist, and of course, the compulsory cameo by the Junior Eurovision. Just to remind you that Junior Eurovision is happening. Uh, just a reminder here, uh, we do not cover the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. Yes, uh, good luck to... Country. Insert child name here. <laughs> <Yes>. so... <laughs> so then Thursday, uh, during semifinal two, we have the Shalva Band, Lior Suscard, uh, who is a mentalist. Is he the same mentalist that's also going to be in the green room? Or is it, or are there two mentalists happening at this year's? It's the the one that's been advertised since January or February, whenever that news came out. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if he's going to be doing green room stuff. Uh, they they were making it sound like he was going to just kind of be like an unofficial fifth host, but it sounds like, like they're <laughs> scaling back what he's doing a little like, bit. So that, that seems wise. Yeah, that seems yeah. wise. I come to Eurovision for songs, not for hey. There's a mentalist as well. Mm-hmm. Izhar Cohen, uh, who was their representative in 1978. And then for the grand final, uh, Neto will be back. Donna International, Ilanit, who is their first Eurovision entry from 1973 and who also represented them in 1977. Nadav Guj, who was their entry in 2015. And he was he was Golden Boy, wasn't he? Because yes. that's the song that mentions Tel Aviv, so it makes sense to bring him back. Mm-hmm. Gal Gadot will be there in some respect. Neto will be performing her new song, Nana Banana. Yeah, uh, the single dropped this past friday and um not her best work no i gotta say um i did find one article that said move over everybody we found the song of the summer i was just like really was that written by iceland music news no or? no it wasn't it was written by uh some paper out of israel though so that does make sense okay where it's like okay if you're the entertainment desk and this is the new thing i guess but also please listen to the song first and then write your article because this is this it feels kind of like a bummer yeah I, it it I, w- I was underwhelmed. I, yes, I was also underwhelmed. I'm just like, okay, this is you. You have been given the stage to to present to the world again, and that's what you're sending. Okay, yeah. I'm actually more excited just to watch the Eurovision Daisy Chain that's going to be happening at some point, if only because I have seen the video of Eleni listening to Verka's song, <laughs> and they both start bopping. Yeah, as, they both start like, bopping. Mom and, like, is it's, watching it's in the background. It's clearly going to be yeah. like a reverent <laughs> performance of a very irreverent number, and I'm always mm-hmm. here for that. Uh, and then we also have Madonna and Idan Raichel. I don't think they're performing together, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Eurovision is always full of surprises. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be a pretty full show. Yeah. Like, like that, that, because that's a lot of performers. All, all of those things are in addition to the 26 entries that are performing the show. 
Mm -hmm. And like the hour long voting results. So pack a sandwich. Yeah, let's say pack Uh, some snacks, friends. (laughs) It should be a good show, I think. I hope. I've got my fingers crossed. Yeah. And then the last bit of news before we hit the main topic of today's episode, the big five have drawn where they're going to be performing in the grand final. Germany drew the first half. Uh, Israel, we already knew, was going to be in slot 14, so kicking off the second half. And the other four auto qualifiers, so France, Italy, Spain, and United Kingdom, they all drew second half. It's getting some structure. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. We're almost there. We know where some of the things are. We will know where all of the things are by Friday. Big important thing that we don't usually have to do on the podcast is give a big old spoiler warning. Uh, So... We're going to be talking a lot about the rehearsal footage provided by Eurovision in today's episode. If you are avoiding that until you see the actual performances on TV, you may want to hold off on listening to this episode until after the live shows. Uh, If you are about to press pause, we are dropping another episode on Friday, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now that you've had a chance to not be spoiled, uh, we're going to move forward with our predictions for who we think are going to qualify for the grand final. Uh, And our process is a little extensive. uh, So just kind of give a rundown of how we determine these rankings. It's not just Ben and me flipping coins or anything like that. Uh, We do have our own individual rankings. We did uh, one ranking uh, right after we finished recording our uh, semifinal review episodes uh so before rehearsals began uh but after we had a chance to fully process all of the entries and we also did a ranking uh just the other day uh, after all of the rehearsal footage was revealed and we were able to kind of get a sense of what this is going to look like on stage we've also established what uh i'm now calling the chris king index thank you chris He was on our first review episode of this season and mentioned in a passing comment, I think when we were talking about Belarus, comparing the likes and dislikes on the video and just getting a ratio from that. And it kind of got me thinking, oh, that's a much more interesting way of parsing YouTube data rather than just getting total views. Uh, So we've done that for the official video, the first rehearsal video, and the second rehearsal video. So getting all of those ratios figured out and pointed out. And then we've used the odds chart on the EurovisionWorld.com website to just see where the bookmakers uh, have landed on each of the semifinals and how those rank. All of these rankings are done within the semifinals. So we're uh, for semifinal one, we're just ranking within those 17 entries. We're not doing like the full field of 41 entries uh, when we rank these. We do some tabulating and come up with the 10 entries that have the most points. And yeah, uh, Ben, do you want to read off the list of the first semifinal? Yeah, sure thing. So for the first semifinal, we are predicting that the following 10 nations are going to get through. Australia, Belgium, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Poland, Serbia, and Slovenia. So in 11th, we have Estonia, and there's really only 12 points separating uh, 12th place and 8th place. Just looking over the differences in our rankings, I have Belgium in my 11th place, but I do have Georgia getting through. Mike, you don't have Poland or Belgium getting through. Those are your 12th and 13th, Mm -hmm. but you do have Estonia and Belarus. Uh, Montenegro is in last place. Poor, poor Montenegro. <laughs> like that, I I don't recall an entry as poorly received as Montenegro was. Uh, were it not for the uh, their official YouTube video, that that one actually scored pretty decently with that ratio. Uh, the the Chris King Index, our, our mm-hmm. CKI ranking. They love the blue uh, jeans. It must be the blue jeans, uh, the beach, the yeah, the 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 four K vistas. But in contrast. Their second rehearsal video had a uh, score of 35.36%. What that means is of the people who use the like and dislike feature, two thirds dislike <laughs> that, that video. Slam that dislike button. Yeah. So, which, which is shockingly low. Like the, the next lowest entry, like was still above 50%, which meant like, okay, more people liked it than disliked it, but still. But the, the people have spoken and they have said, nah. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to see if Montenegro is able to pull off the null point for 
the semifinals, which has not happened yet. It's been a while, uh, yeah. Since they've switched to the uh, split scoring format where there's the jury score and the audience vote. Right now, I think it's San Marino that holds the lowest score at one point for their 2017 entry with uh, Valentina, which I think was wrong, but we won't get into that now. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the, the, past the past is past. past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to brighter things and talk about our predictions. Okay. So how, how do you feel about this top 10? I feel, I feel good about this top 10. I don't understand Belgium. My literal notes for Belgium are, are what are you doing? Like, I have no clue what the, t- what the, the drums... Or, like, the big lo- triangle piece of the lighting. Or even, like, just the orange has to do with this song. My reaction to it when I saw the, like, the costuming and the drums was... I used to uh, work at a school in alumni relations, and we would be in charge of uh, handling the uh, commencement reunion weekend activities. And this just kind of struck me as, oh no, the Tycho Club and a uh, senior recital got booked for the same venue, and we can't move either of them. I guess we'll combine the two and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, because I, I, there's just a lot of elements going on that I don't see how they work together, and I think that the vocal performance is not as strong as it needs to be. And it, it's just kind of dreary. Yes, in a way, like there, there's just like no enthusiasm behind anything that's happening in 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 the footage that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So looking looking through these entries, there are two of them that I think took our notes. Slovenia. I had suggested weeks and weeks ago that make sure make this feel like you two are the only two in that arena. Mm-hmm. And I think they're doing that with at least what we have seen in the 30 seconds we are allowed to see. Right. That said, I still don't know if if like what's very much working for me is going to work for a larger audience of people. Like they're they're one of the ones where I'm like, okay, I could be completely wrong on this one. I'm fairly confident that they're going to stick the landing. Mm-hmm. I guess I just wish that Gasper was doing something else on stage because he's just mm-hmm. standing there and he's playing the, the keyboard or whatever and the guitar, which we know like aren't actually, aren't actually doing anything in. yeah so it's just like okay why are you here mm-hmm. <laughs> which which sounds harsh but it's mm-hmm. just like it, it's it's a little distracting in a way but all of the rankings uh like our rankings the youtube rankings the odds just have have them in the five to seven range mm-hmm. which feels right which feels correct yeah uh, the other one that took our notes and i'm so happy uh Australia. Australia did the dang thing. Oh, my goodness. They got her floating yeah. off the ground. They are knocking it out of the park. Yeah, like, and excellent I'm, I'm, work, I'm y'all. so happy. Excellent mm-hmm. work. One that I am sad is not really sticking the landing, and I think it's to their detriment, uh, Portugal. Yeah, I don't know what happened. They've changed the coloring of everything, because as much as I was saying that the white furry stuff was too much mm-hmm. with everything else they had going on, like, switching that over to green satiny stuff and then like making the face mask just black the face mask was always going to be an issue Mm -hmm. i think because like i just did not understand how that fit in with the performance Mm -hmm. i sort of get where they're going with the green satiny thing because i think they're just trying to make it look like the stem of the rose that's kind of the centerpiece of the visual the video display that's Mm -hmm. happening uh, behind them but yeah it's just not connecting and i think it's also tricky just because it it is pretty much a recreation of what we've already seen mm-hmm. just in different colors the more that i watch it the more I, I i'm thinking that the home audience is just gonna be like what do i do with this and and it sounds like they've also had just really frustrating rehearsals the dancers uh working through an injury so he's not able to do the like the death drop kick Mm-hmm. what have you as powerfully as he was in the national final performances so mm-hmm. if portugal does end up getting through i think that's fine i won't be shocked if that if if we are correct that it does not get that's through. not yeah yeah okay so let's talk about the areas where where we differed specifically on like your end mike so with poland mm-hmm. uh we, we already discussed belgium that neither of us quite get quite gets it but like the rest of the numbers are saying maybe uh, but like, what about some of these other ones? I'm going to say from eight to 12, 13, I like, that's where my bubble mm-hmm. is. And after I went through my process of how I, I rank these things, which I won't bore you with that, but I was a little surprised that, that Poland didn't end up making the cut. Yeah. The one, the, the one that I really wanted to make the cut and it's like, okay, I didn't quite make the cut was uh, Georgia, which I had as number 11. I think that's where... 
it's going to be super, super close. And, and like we said, our range, there was only about a 12 point difference. And I think it is going to end up being probably that close. Yeah. Like I think in the real deal, that, yeah, yeah. a lot of these, we do definitely have that bubble. Georgia, like once I saw it in their second rehearsal, what that's going to look like, I'm like, oh, this is as effective as we told them it needed to be. It's one of the performances that I'm actually excited to see the full. Yes version of it because i mean with a lot of these performances it is just kind of a recreation or a slight reimagining of national final performances i mean even australia which like visually looks stunning it's still it's still what we're drawing from elements from uh from what they selected whereas like georgia like it, it is something new and exciting the one that i'm really excited about that no one else seems to be excited about is belarus like i had belarus as my number 10 that song is an earworm I, I really like the song and I really like what they're doing with the staging. Like it, it's like drawing from, I'm guessing a Lisa Frank influence. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I think with the staging elements, with the instrument cases and making it seem kind of like backstage of a concert. Yeah. I think there's just an interesting story going on there and she's delivering, I think a solid vocal mm-hmm. and I just want Belarus to do well. Okay. Like I, I love Belarus. I, okay. <laughs> I, I, okay, so I also like the, weirdly, like the instrument cases just on stage. Like, I like very much kind of the, well, it's not really a noises off feel that feels, that feels wrong, but sort of, sort of a, hey, we're just going to use these because they're there and this works. Mm-hmm. But there's still a busyness to this. Like, I like the song up until it hits the first chorus and becomes a different song. And I feel like there's just a lot going on visually between Xena and her dancers and everything else in the background. Yeah. Where it's just a lot all at once. And that that's what I think that is is going to struggle. Although Cypress is also doing a lot. Uh, yeah. and I'm not like the replay effect that works so well in the video, you know, where you can edit it does not work with live TV. No. And does not look good. I'm I'm actually kind of worried about Cypress. Like they they were having a lot of sound problems mm-hmm. in their rehearsals and the fact that they're going first does not fill me with confidence oh, yeah, just no, because like, they have like, been yeah. kind of progressively dropping. I don't think it's any fault of Tomta's or the performance. I think it's just like, oh, no, you're first up and you're at the most risk of encountering technical issues that are beyond your control. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a problem. But like the reveal of her look, which is just like, oh, it's sort of Hatari inspired, but with Swarovski crystals from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, and, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's not working for me, and like it really does feel like a replay of a lot of Fuego elements. And it's just like, uh, get a lot of Fuego elements out of but that like, zone. It makes me want to want to check out Fuego again because it, it's missing sort of the fun of that song. That's the issue. There's just an element of fun that should be there, but this feels more like work. Mm-hmm. Estonia, please explain, because I thought this was some 2016 style staging. And we are in 2019. I don't know. I think it's going to come down to how well their green screen thing is is going to work this time. Yeah. And I think, and honestly, I think that's why it's more on the bubble than higher up in the rankings. Because they were having a lot of problems getting the green screen effect to work properly during rehearsals. And I don't know how it ended up in my top 10, but it did. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I, th- I think part of it... Sometimes they sneak in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think... I think the jury's gonna be okay with this song like i don't think i don't think it's gonna have like massive jury appeal but it's gonna have some jury appeal and i don't think it's gonna have like massive televote but it's gonna have some televote i think it may just have enough of both to have it sneak in there it's it's not as divisive as a number of the entries that are in this semifinal okay true question for you were mm-hmm. you also disappointed by San Marino's staging? Yeah. I was trying to think of like what would have made it work better. And where I landed was trampolines. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, okay. The place that I landed was just get like the Cadillac from that video and pop your two backing singers in there and just have and just have Sir Hot just like walking around, just doing doing like like a Countess Luann sort of a deal. Instead of like this weird cruise ship esque deal. Now that you say that, I want to start the campaign that Countess Luann should represent San Marino next year. So <laughs> I've already started the change.org petition. There we go. There we go. Oh, man. Yeah, I think it's fine for what it is. It, it, it's very colorful. It It is very colorful, 
but like we gave you slot 17 because we want the best for you san marino and this is what you did i mean it's certainly better than last year's stage okay true um, yes yeah um but <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you do have the like the what, what did you call them when we discussed them? The say not on it. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. Like, yeah, seriously, and... like, give me we have discussed that Sirhad is a delightful international bon vivant. And this captures none of that. Also, he's just not sounding great vocally. No, but I don't think that. I don't I, think I, that, yeah, like, I think that was I think that was always Sirhad. going to be the thing. Yeah. Um, what I do like is how white uh, like <laughs> the white outfit. No, no, no. Like the white outfits are impressively clean looking and like the way it contrasts with the visuals happening behind him like it is a pretty striking visual oh, yeah it's, so, it, it, it does yeah. pop and i do think the second rehearsal video looked better than the first rehearsal video because they did get rid of the like the megaphone things that the two backing dancers were using and i, I think they chose more consistent graphics mm-hmm. um like it, it it seemed like the uh first rehearsal was just using kind of like a hodgepodge of graphics mm-hmm. i i don't think this is going to be San Marino's year nope. either, which <laughs> ma- which makes me sad, but I'm hoping they're having a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So let us move on to the second semifinal. Our predictions for this group include Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Malta, the Netherlands, Norway, Romania, Russia, Sweden, and Switzerland. Missing from that list, but 11th in our rankings is North Macedonia. Yeah, I think the issue there was that it just got hammered. Like, in the way that our rankings work, uh, the official video just got hammered. Like, it just did not resonate. Well, that's not even accurate. Like, it within this field, it did not resonate. Had it been in the first semifinal, it would have been, it would have ranked 10th, and I think it would have been fine. Ben, your rankings didn't line up exactly with our top 10 but this did match your top 10 i found the the second set like this final set of rankings that we did based off of the performances very intriguing because unusually for the eurovision season is that you and i have been fairly of a single mind on a lot of mm-hmm. these and then this happened and we're just all over the place particularly in the second semifinal. in that we are well we still think that a lot of the same ones are going through but like within our official rankings where we think they will <laughs> end up yeah, in the lineup we, is very different. Yeah, like we we I think our scores averaged out to five for most of them, <laughs> where it's just like you, the ones you ranked high, I ranked much lower, and vice versa. Um, yeah, I do not have Norway in my list, but I do have North Macedonia, uh, and I was kind of hoping that I would have North Macedonia a little higher, just be like, oh, can I just push? <laughs> can it, I push it like, into over our the official? Edge, yeah, but, yeah, but that that was not going to happen. Well, yeah, and like and, I think it dropped in my rankings before seeing the performance and afterwards just because i feel like it's not it, it's missing a little bit of the oomph it needs to to really mm. push it over the edge out of bubble territory speaking of the bubble it's interesting that we both had croatia as number 11 yes on our list i wanted that one to be higher that was my that was my oh man but also i have watched that performance i'm like okay did you improperly store those wings why are they brown yeah and folded in yes weirdly? yeah just, yeah like, yeah like like, like go full rem losing my religion video if you're going to do that yes although there was one clip that made me laugh right out loud where uh the two backing dancers like backstage or offstage or whatever and then you see them flying up in the video display and it's like oh no that just <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. it looked very monty python for yeah. some reason yes <laughs> so um, yeah is yeah, that, that, I, want, that was I want them to do well because i really love the vocals on that song he sings it very well live but also i am watching the visuals and it's not quite doing it for me yeah it's unfortunate uh one that kind of blew me away and does not appear to have blown you away at the same level is so we just got done talking about how we're concerned about cyprus opening the show i think Mm -hmm. armenia is killing it on on opening the show like that feels like a very strong performance if if the rest of it is like what we've seen i agree with that yeah i I was actually kind of surprised that like i had armenia as ninth on my personal ranking Mm -hmm. and i agree that that seemed low but i think there are just a lot of really strong entries in this semifinal. Like a lot of the favorites are in this semifinal. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it was just pushed down because of that. Okay. It's just like, yeah, I think Netherlands is probably going to do better than Armenia. I think Russia is probably going to do better than Armenia. And then like Azerbaijan, there's just all of these favorites mm-hmm. that are in the field. And it's like, oh, okay, well, Armenia is just taking up 
uh, one of one of those extra slots. So just thinking, so. yeah, thinking of the favorites and and like one other one. There are three entries in this one that I think are overcomplicating things to a degree they do not need to. Okay, just sort of running through these. Romania is. I think is trying to do conceptual stuff with this performance. And admittedly, I want to see like the rest of it because we've seen the same section in both of their rehearsal clips. Mm -hmm. But I'm concerned that they are trying to do something a little too high concept with what they have going on. And that's going to hinder them. Like that's why they ended up really low on my ranking. Okay. Because I think the song is good, but I, th I don't understand the performance with it. Interesting. Yeah, because I... I think I had sort of the opposite reaction to that. Um, one, I was just kind of blown away by how well received uh, the rehearsal footage was. Like, it was the top ranked video for the first rehearsal. It ranked number three in the second rehearsal. It's like, oh, wow. So the audience is really responding to this one. And like listening to the vocals in the second rehearsal, it's like, oh, they're taking the like very high pitched warbling. They've lowered that a little bit and giving the backing singers a little bit more of that work, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was a good choice. Which is just because always I know, smart. Yeah, because Esther Peony's vocals could be kind of hit or miss in that area. But yeah, I was sort of getting vibes of Ukraine's performance last year. Like, I don't think she's going to be starting off the performance rising out of the piano like Nosferatu, <laughs> but it's like kind of tapping into that element, which was definitely a crowd pleaser last year. Mm -hmm. So... I think they're making a lot of smart choices. Mm -hmm. The other two that I think are overcomplicating things for themselves, Azerbaijan. Like, they drop, mm. they drop for me because I'm like, they're trying to do a lot with this performance, and his vocals are kind of kind of all over the place. And, like, he is hitting the high notes, but he feels like he's he could be outsourcing those to the background vocalists. Interesting. And then also, I, I do not get what's going on with, like, the, the heart surgery metaphor. Like, I well, I get what's what they're aiming for, but I'm not sure that they're hitting it. I'm trying to piece together what they're what they're going for, but like e even like reading through the blogs and like the descriptions of it, it's like okay, I'm not getting the full sense of it. And like I think they're doing a good job of kind of teasing it mm -hmm. with the rehearsal clips, but like I don't have a full sense of the story. Mm -hmm. But I'm very intrigued by it. Like this this is what I have picked as winning the the second semifinal. I'm intrigued by it, but I also think that they could like fall flat on their face and end up in eleventh like last year. I don't think that that's gonna happen. Oh yeah, I, like just given the just given just given the the other entries in the semifinal and particularly the first half of the semifinal. Yeah, I, I agree there. But yeah, well, I mean, like last year's entry, they had the disadvantage of kicking off the very first semifinal, mm -hmm. and there were moments in that performance that were just dead air. Mm -hmm. Like it was an overhead shot of them like getting into like their third positions for transitioning from the verse to the chorus and it was just some very poor camera choices there but uh this one i think it's just him on stage there aren't like a whole bunch of other people like the only the only issue that i can see is if those robot arms have some sort of technical malfunction mm -hmm. like during the performance which please don't yep, <laughs> yeah um the other one that i think is going to conceptual but i think that the the song the song kind of russia Oh, uh, yeah. Like, they're throwing a lot of money at this, and I don't mm -hmm. I don't necessarily get it. And I, like, I secretly kind of want them to place 11th and just get real mad. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, that, that would be funny. To just, like, yeah, yeah, uh... just, like, throw Sergey and all the money at this and just to have it, like, fizzle. I think it is going to fizzle, like, in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's... The song is just so overwrought, but I am intrigued by this performance. And it has like so many earmarks of like a dream team performance. It's like, oh, a wall of something and him in his own like private cubicle uh, <laughs> in, in the performance. Yeah. Elements of Shady Lady and like his 2016 performance and like, yeah, this, this that and the other. So mm -hmm. I'm very confident that he's going to be able to deliver on the vocal and it's going to be visually interesting. I don't think it's going to be I, I don't it doesn't strike me as visually interesting as what he did in 2016. Mm -hmm. But especially considering where he is in the lineup where like he's preceded by Lithuania, which looks like they're going to have the most boring performance of the night if not the whole competition, mm -hmm. like it, it, there's just it's, nothing. It's going very on straightforward. Yeah, they actually kind of rose in my rankings a little bit. Not not enough to like place. Well, the other one that I think is a fairly straightforward performance, although I like what they're doing with the lighting. Uh, Austria. It wasn't until the first rehearsal that I finally like. It finally clicked for me. It's like, oh, this is how this song is going to work because it it was just like the vocal, and you can hear it kind of echoing in the venue. It's like, oh. This is going to sound really cool live for the people that are in the room, and I think they're going to be able to capture that on TV. 
but I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah. The one that I'm most curious about and that ranked last for us uh, is Moldova's entry. (laughs) That surprised me because like they they almost snuck in because I thought that what they did sort of helped salvage what was otherwise just sort of a very straightforward, forgettable ballad. But uh, Moldova, I have uncomfortable question for you. Your performance is Ukraine? Yeah. And it's it's funny, too. Like, uh, back in, I think it was February, we were talking about uh, Ksenia Semenyova, who was on World's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, World Edition, whatever, whatever it was called. Whatever it was. It, got, it did get renewed for a second season, by the way. Yeah. The sand artist who, like, Eurovision fans will remember from Ukraine's 2011 performance, which was just stunning. And she's doing pretty much the exact same thing here uh only she's using well she's using snow instead of sand she's using slightly whiter sand right but because it is snow the video that's playing behind anna is is video it's not a it's not an overhead camera of the work that cassinia is allegedly doing yeah it's all pre-recorded so it's like okay so you are not only borrowing from this iconic Eurovision performance uh, to the point where like even Mika Newton uh, like got on Instagram and she's like, wow, well, Moldova, you do you, I guess. (laughs) um, I I, I just see this getting raked over the coals by juries for just kind of a lack of originality Mm -hmm. in the concept. And then longtime Eurovision fans are, I I can't imagine them voting for this. Just like we've seen this before. And it's great, but we've seen this before. I didn't realize that it was, like, completely pre-recorded. Like, I thought that it was just, like, oh. on, like, a 15-second delay so that she could be slightly ahead and be on, on cue with the song. Mm-mm. No, no. Okay, it, then why it, is she on stage? Yeah, really. Uh, like, is that, maybe it's in her contract, but, like, if she's not doing it live, why? There was one article that I read that where it was Ksenia who, like, proposed this concept, because uh, I guess she's been like working with snow as a medium recently and really wanted to try this out on a larger stage, which like, that's fine. Yeah, that's, cool. that's totally fine. Maybe not the same stage where you rose to prominence the last time. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, uh, well, it, admittedly, how many stages are there for, for live sand artist? She's, she's done America's got talent. A- end of list. Yeah. And she already won Ukraine's got talent. So like, it's like, how well known is it that it's not live? Where, because like if if everybody knows, like why is she on stage? I mean, I guess it's just to kind of create the sense that it's happening live. I I don't know. Okay. Like I am confusion. They they had to do something. I get, like, yeah, I, I, but yeah, I mean, it's like I I don't know what else they. Well, I mean, there were a lot of other things they could have done, uh, but I don't think any of them would have been any more effective. Mm-hmm. But it's really disappointing. Yeah. Like one that I am. Slightly disappointed by, although I have not liked the song, so I don't know why I'm disappointed in it. Like, it just feels like extra emotional energy that I don't need to put towards this. But mm-hmm. Switzerland, you are doing a great job this year. Why is why 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 is your main performer performing in workout gear? Eh. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ireland, it's not working. Uh, I do like that the the floor of the the diner just sort of falls away into space for in that overhead shot but that's about it oh i wasn't even paying attention to that no you know ireland i think did the best that they could with this like i i really enjoy the sort of comic book art style that's happening on the main visual display like i th- I, th- I think they made some cute choices there it's just the song the song structurally is just such a dirge mm-hmm. and I don't think there was really anything that could have been done to fully salvage this, but mm-hmm. this is another one where it's like, well, I hope I hope you're having fun while you're there. Oh, the yeah. other one that I found surprisingly underwhelming, given the song. Norway. Yeah. The performance is surprisingly static. Just it's like, okay, cool, you're just doing the Northern Lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah, I can't even tell how much has changed from like the first rehearsal to the second rehearsal because it seems like a lot has changed, but like I couldn't give you specifics on what those things are. And yeah, I mean, I think the audience will still respond to the song, but I don't think the performance is going to be helping with that. Yeah. I have a big question mark about Malta. Again, I'm not a big fan of the song. I thought their first rehearsal went well, but apparently there were some major technical problems and they had to like kind of scrap uh, some of the 
larger elements of it uh because it seemed like they had like kind of two green screens happening Mm -hmm. at once and um yeah the second rehearsal it was just reduced to one green screen and it kind of has the same visual setup as san marino's performance but i think it just kind of defaulted into that where it's just like oh like brightly colored dancers Mm -hmm. In front of a very brightly colored screen. And I'm hoping that they're able to kind of figure stuff out because it it seems like this is like a last minute curveball that was thrown their way. I'm interested to see what the outcome of that is going to be. Yeah, like I responded well to to the colorful nature of the performance. But yeah, I also felt like, okay, something they're trying to work something out here and I'm not sure what it is. And it seems like it's like trying to work it out and be like, oh, okay, we've got a flat tire now. How do we get to our destination? And we have this one ranked pretty high. Like, this is fourth on our uh, combined ranking. Yeah, like, this one snuck up in my rankings where I'm like, okay, uh, I'm still kind of, the jury is out on the song, but, like, the performance feels, it feels bright and it feels colorful and it feels like something that, it, it provides some levity after a bunch of ballads. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to stick out because it, it is right between Croatia and Lithuania, and neither one of those performances, I think, are going to rise to that level, even with the position that Malta has found itself in. Mm-hmm. I'm still... Eh, about the song mm-hmm. but i'm i'm fairly confident it's still gonna get through yeah that does it for these these two semis i am i'm really looking forward to first semi on tuesday yes uh if anything just so that we can finally move this thing along it's been yeah <laughs> and it, it's felt like such a long process and i'm just if we can cut down that field from 41 to 26 Yes, I, I am. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm very ready to, to check in at the end of the week and see how we feel about what's about what's happened. Yeah, if you are going to watch the semifinals by whatever streaming method uh, is available, it, the show will start at 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday too. But we we, we will have more on that later in the week. Okay, well that's going to do it for now on this episode of the Euro What. Thanks for listening. The Euro What Podcast is hosted by Ben Smith, that's me, and Mike McComb. That's me. You can find us on our website at eurowhat.com and on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at eurowhat. We'd love to hear your questions and comments. Mike will be on Twitter during the semifinals, so please be sure to say hi to him. I will be avoiding them so I can watch them after work. You can subscribe to the Euro What on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or the podcast app of your choice. Rating and reviewing the podcast when you subscribe also helps other Eurovision fans find us. We'll be back this Friday as we get ready for the Eurovision Grand Final. See you then.